Hi guys, welcome to Pixel Affair, it's Kobe here. So I woke up this morning to exciting news about new release of Cinema 4, the 2023.2, right? And as usual, when there's new up, uh, new release, basically there's going to be new updates and also new exciting features all the time. So that got me excited. Now this video is basically about my view about this new release and how I feel about this whole um, release, right? First of all, they are cool updates and cool releases. Like I like some of the stuff that are showing in there, but personally, I think now before I share my review or how I feel about this whole release, let's first of all, look at some of the new stuff or what's new and the updates in Cinema 4D 2023.2. The first thing we are going to talk about is the new commander. Now in Cinema 4D, if you type Shift C, you can see it brings up this box where you can search for certain tools in here. But with the new commander, you can basically search for almost everything in Cinema 4D from let's say um, object to tags to capsules and preset tools, like everything in Cinema 4D can basically search it with the new commander. And I think it's good. It helps the workflow. If you know your Cinema 4D, it can make you work very fast. Right now, if you get um, your new Cinema 4D and you don't, you search the Type Shift C and you don't get this um, new commander, you can basically right click somewhere up here, All right, and you can come to Command Manager, or you can type in um, Shift F12 and it will bring this um, same Command Manager. And now you can type in your commander, like type in Commander, and now you can see you have Commander down here. Select it and you can assign the Shift C to it so that it comes anytime it types Shift C. So with the new commander, like I said, almost everything is in my 4D. So if I type in Shift C and it comes out and I type in something like say um, blue, right? You can see we are seeing materials um, like with the blue related, right? But if I click on this filter here, you can see I can restrict it to say model. And every model that has like blue related to it, you can see it shows up or I can restrict it to say materials. And every material that has blue to it can or media or notes or like operators like everything that has blue related to it can actually um show here let's go back to all and let's close this and now let's close um so that's basically about the commander there's a lot of interesting stuff you can do with it but this is it's simple but i think it's very useful so that's about this um commander in cinema 4d now the next two that looks quite simple but can be very powerful is the new thicken um generator now this is good for architectural um, modeling and stuff for especially for your floor plan and stuff like that like it was demonstrated in the cinema 4d video but it can be very powerful in several ways so in let me actually come in here and i'll create something like say a text right and i'll change i'll type like something simple let's type s right and now let's change um let's middle align it and now come into the caps and let's uncheck the start and end cap so you can see we have this flat um text and if say we want to add thickness to this uh, flat s what initially we will do is use the um cloth surface so i'll make the text a chart of the cloth surface come in here let's set the subdivision to um zero and now let's increase the thickness now let's increase it and now the more you increase it you can see now it it doesn't look right right the sharpness at the edges at the tips here it's gone and it doesn't work right now let's take it out of the cloud surface and now let's go back into our generators and now let's look for thickening and like it, it's add thickness to your object so i'll drag and drop in the text and you can see it's basically doing the same thing that the cloud surface was doing but if you come into the thickening um, generator and you can see the mode is set to basic let's change it from basic to advanced and now you can see now this looks right let me change the display so you can see this is this one is actually really thickening our um our text and it's keeping it like the same shape how it's supposed to look right if you set it to the basic so this is how the basic looks and basically look like the um the cloth surface but the advanced actually gives you a um, nice well taken object and that doesn't end there you can even come in here and say we don't want the shell so i can uncheck and you can see now we have only the two sides like you've um basically make it a small a thinner version or we can say we don't want the caps right the two caps so now i can see we have only the shell right 
I mean, you can play around with it, or you can just say you don't want the shell, but you want only the inside, or you want only the outside. So you can use it for a lot of interesting stuff that I think it's really, really cool. So it can be very powerful. And aside that, you can actually also use polygon selection and um, 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 vertex map to actually control it. And I've not really dived deep into all of these, but later we'll get in and play along with it. So this, I think, is very powerful and can be very, very useful. Now, staying within the generators in there, there's also been a significant update or improvement to the symmetry tool. So if I create the symmetry tool and now let's go ahead and add this RS test in there. Now you can see it's creating these two um, text for us. If I take the S and start moving it, you can see it's creating this symmetry. But what you can do is that if I select the symmetry and come down here and say remove outside. So now you can see it's cutting outside of our S and it could be any object and you can see with this you can start creating a lot of interesting stuff with it. Let's actually come in here and see let me set for shift um shift c and look for something like um head so i want a human head so i'll select this and bring it in and you can see it's created this human head let's actually delete the s and let's actually use this one as an example so now if i come in here and i create let's say um a symmetry and make it a child you can see it's giving us the plane. You can actually come in here and define where we want it to. Um, so you can see another one. So we can see we've created a symmetry for the X and at the same time the Y. We can also do the Z as well or minus Z, right? So, but for now, let's actually keep it simple, just the X. And now initially, before you do this, you probably might have to... Um, um, select all these half points and delete it before you actually put it in the symmetry but now you don't necessarily have to do that so all you have to do is now select the symmetry and say remove outside and now it's basically working so i can select um either of these points right and i move it and i can see it's working you don't necessarily have to delete it but what makes it interesting is that it actually work as it is so i can select object come to object mode and now if i move it can see we have and you can use this to do some exciting animation especially for motion graphics and stuff like that i mean actually with this one like i said i've not really played a, a, along with it that much but rocket lasso i watched some video from rocket lasso which explains further most of the tools so i actually leave the link below which explains further how most of these tools works but i still feel like i should talk about it and like i said this is basically my view on this new release i'm just mentioning some of the stuff i've not really played along with it so after at the end i'll show out say what i think about this whole release and stuff like that but i think this symmetry new release is really cool and you can do a lot of stuff with it you can set it to radial and now can play i mean endlessly with it right next is the node editor and now there's improving ui um, readability and usability when working with like c notes and redshift materials also, there's like pop out asset browser and attribute panel within um, the notes editor and like extended color coding data types and all of those. Things. And like whole lot when it comes to the node editor, editor, there's been some quite of improvements. You can do a lot of and um, there's been a lot of improvement in there. There are also new notes with um, regards to Cinema 4D scene notes as well. And with Pyro, the viewport render uses color and scene lightning like um, sport, directional, point light. As well now the destructor force limits pyro inside or outside the box area so with the sma 4d if you go to the forces the destructor force now you can use it to limit your pyro for the pyro to work just within the destructor force or just outside the destructor force without it affecting what's within so i think that's powerful and now the maximum noises um also so in sma 4d when you create object the noises now the whole maximum noise supports um the emission right so if you right click and you emit um, pyro and you go down where the noises are initially all you could control was the noise speed and stuff but now the whole maximum noise able, um, capabilities have been added now you can work with that as well and it's also vertex color map support for the emission and um, local velocity for emitter pyro um output explicitly linked to simulator like a whole lot for the i'm um, um the pyro i've not played with it but later if i do a video on that i'll let um, you guys know 
so and like there's an in-depth like tutorial by um racket lasso which you can actually check later as well right now another thing that i was really excited about or cinema for this um balloon like um simulation so if you add a clock tag to object you can see you have the balloon tag the, the balloon tab and in there all you could do was to just inflate it and you could do nothing to it you couldn't restrict it to any part of any object or whatsoever but now with this new release now you can actually use vertex map to control where you want your inflation to take um, place and i think that can be very powerful and can be very useful um for the uh, balloon simulation and for users so i think it's a very cool addition to um this whole um, new release right there are other updates as well enhanced uh, the, the python interpretation like all those things are quite cool like other updates which are like behind the scenes so that's basically the new release and this i just like i said woke up to it this morning and i just glanced over it and i felt this is cool now what do i think about this whole new release now my view about this whole thing is that i think first of all they are cool updates and cool releases like i like some of the stuff that are showing in there but personally i think it was a bit underwhelming not because the new features are not cool and everything but maybe because of the way cinema 4d was going recently with the new um, release especially with cinema 4d 2023.1 where they released the pyro i mean if you actually check from cinema 4d r26 they started with this powerful simulation uh, cloth system right and which is particle based and they improved it in cinema 4d 2023 and 2023.1 he actually added pyro and looking at the tra uh, trajectory which my 4d was um going looking at the particle base system and all this fluid simulation and all of that honestly speaking i thought this release i mean was going to have something along the lines of something like say particles right so particle um a machine or particle emitter or flu even liquid simulation something along the lines of particles so that's what i was actually thinking so maybe not necessarily these features are all cool but maybe my expectations were raised too much so when this release came and i actually didn't see anything related to particles to it even though there's been some improvements with the pyro and the cloud simulation and stuff like that i felt oh this is not this time because i thought we were really close but hopefully let's see how it goes maybe in the new release Maybe we'll get something along those lines. But honestly speaking, I was very hopeful like the way Cinema 4D was going since the past couple of releases. I think past three or four releases has been along the lines of, you know, simulation and particle based system and all of that. I thought we were going to see something along those lines as well in this particular um, release. But then it didn't come. And But I believe it's going to come definitely at some point. Just that um, my expectations were raised and now it's been dropped a bit like i'm not going to expect it because in my 40 can surprise you like just like they did surprise me with the pirate simulation in this uh, point uh 2023.1 so point two this is what we get and i think this like the tools we have here like are interesting but i think could be better so this is what i basically think i feel it's a bit underwhelming especially especially with the way out my expectations were raised not necessarily because the um, new released um, updates are bad just that my expectations were raised so that's how come i'm not really really blown away with this new um tools i'm excited about it but not really blown away with it so that's basically how i feel about this whole new release i don't know what you think and how you feel about it as well you can let me know in the comment section and you can have a dialogue about this whole new release that's what i think about this whole thing thank you for watching and i'll see you in a new video very soon